Hey y'all, welcome back to Trendy DIY 29, back with another video, back with another episode of growing a sustainable garden. And last episode, it was getting a little too long, so we're going to start off where we left off at, which was the second method of how you can start your plants or your seedlings, and which was the paper towel method. If you did not see the last video, you can check that Um you know, click on my channel, check out my uh, previous videos because all of these videos get you ready for this step. This is method number two. And so what we're going to do now is I'm going to do my other thing. I already did the peppers last video. So now I'm going to figure out oh, what I want to do. I'm going to do these uh, cayons, these long thin cayenne peppers. And what you can do, like if since you're if you don't use all of your seeds, which I doubt you will unless you're doing a big farm or something, is that you can put these in a mason jar. And if you have like one of those Ziploc um sealer things like or a food saver or something, and it came with that little hose, you can use that and you can actually suck the air out of the jar once you put these seed packs in there, and it'll keep them fresh and just keep them in a dark um dark place cool dark place and they can last for years they really can like i've known people who said that they've planted seeds that were like as old as like three or four years open and i'm gonna show you guys that this is what you don't want to do with your seed pack is what just happened to me you can use scissors but like i said i try to only open up just enough space because i want as little air to go in here as possible so these are my long thin cayons we wetted this already and I'm just going to spread out my cayenne pepper seeds. And I know a lot of people that like cayenne, so I'm going to try to grow a nice amount of them. And you can actually smell the spiciness coming off of these. But usually I grow like the Thai chilies and they come out beautiful and they do really, really well in pots. So if you want to do something that's a little less intimidating, less as big, then you can do Thai chilies. Thai chilies are very, very hot. A little bit goes a long way. And it's a nice way to add color into your garden. And it doesn't need a lot of uh, attention. Like peppers are usually really, really good, especially the hot peppers. They do really good in heat and dry environments they don't need a lot of water if you give them too much water you can hurt your peppers so right here i have my pepper seeds spread out and i want to make sure that i you don't want them on top of each other because they're going to grow roots and they're going to sprout so you want to have them somewhat spaced out you don't want them stuck together and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off some of this excess because I had problems the last time getting it out of the bag. And do not see my scissors. So just use this knife. I got my cutting board, so it's good. And I'm just going to... Ooh, that did not work out right. Talk about dull knife, I guess, right? But I'm just going to go like this. Not the prettiest thing, but you get the picture, right? I got my pepper seeds. Some then fell off into the nooks and crannies. Don't waste your seeds. Even if you like, I don't have no more space. If it's your backyard, just throw them back there and might grow. I would not necessarily advise that though, because then you'll have wild fruit, fruit all over, vegetables all over your garden. Um, but you could do that. And I'm just going to do what I did the last time. And I'm going to fold these over. Okay. And I'm going to give it one quick spray. And then this is going to go into a sandwich bag too. As you guys can see, pepper seeds are about the same size as the, uh, about the same size as like tomato seeds, green pepper seeds. They're very, they're small, but carrot seeds are like even smaller and Onion seeds are like super small and that's why I chose to do the onions from the starter kit because starter kit onions, you usually have like a way better success rate. I'm not trying to find out because I've heard onions can be very nitpicky. It's not the prettiest plant now. So if you plant for beauty, 
and only and you really only want pretty vegetable plants i would advise you to google all of the vegetable plants in the different stages of growing because you'll be shocked how some of these plants look at different stages of life and i don't want you to be like you got me to grow this ugly thing in my backyard and that's the only thing that i planted so if you're only planting like one or two things Make sure that you look up the different stages of life to see what it looks like. To see whether or not that's something you want to look at. Because a lot of like root vegetables tend to grow real, real wild and crazy before they're ready to be harvested. So it can tend to look a little bit messy. Especially if you're going to do it in a bid, it's going to be a lot of work. Like you have to like be weeding it out and stuff like that. So keep that in mind. We got our peppers done. Our cayenne peppers. The next thing, here goes another one. And we're just going to do this for all of the plants. And right now, I, like I told you guys, I don't have experience with doing this, but I was told about this. I've done some research on it. People swear by this stuff. Swear by this method. Like, people are talking about, well, I got my seed germinated in three days or two days. I'm like, that's unheard of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test out this method, and then I'm going to do the same ones in the peat pot and I'm gonna have two different things going on and we're gonna figure out together which method works and if or if there's somewhat equal germination time and see once the seed germinates how well does it transplant into soil and see if it actually grows okay so that was my uh cayenne pepper the next pepper I'm gonna do I'm going to do, I'm trying to figure out as I go along which ones. I'm going to do my, oh. I'm going to do some basil. No, I might do the basil, guys, in a pot because I'm looking at it when the seeds are like little, little, like these seeds are like the size of baby poppy seeds. Like they're very, very small. So when they grow little like that, I'm thinking to myself, like that root is probably going to be very skinny. It may be long, but it may be very skinny. And I'm not sure how that's going to transplant. So I'm just going to stick to what I know on that. If, when in doubt, stick to what you know. And that's when it comes to anything. I'm just going to do some of these for fun because something is telling me do the sugar snaps and I've seen people do the snaps, but I just thought since they're already big, I might as well, because you don't want the, the one thing to keep in mind, remember that you don't need, if you don't want like have a whole bunch of space, sugar snap peas tend to get tall and they bush out. They're a very pretty plant though. They have flowers and vines. They're very, very pretty. So if you don't have a lot of space, do not plant a lot of these. Because these are going to be really tall, they're going to bush out, and they're going to, like, intimidate everything else. This is the only tall thing that you're going to do. I would say maybe plant them in the back as, like, a backdrop and then do the shorter plants in front. And that's probably what I plan on doing because I don't have that bad. And for these, they're a little bit bigger, so I want to make sure that these are really wet. I've heard people say that you can soak your seeds in water for a little while and then put them onto the paper towel or then put them into the dirt and they supposedly grow faster too never done that and right here you know i don't want that many pea plants but i tend i want to be able to have some that if they do really well i'll have some to give away and i'm gonna try to once it gets cold i'm gonna try to see which plants i can actually keep alive inside of my house so i plan on moving all the plants that i can that they say can do good in winter temperatures and I plan on moving inside my house and probably growing them um, in the basement or putting them upstairs in my meditation room. I'm not sure, but I'll figure it out. I'm not going to do that many. Here we go. I did two, four, six. I did eight of them. But you want to make sure you always do more. So say if you want, if you want to do four plants, if you only want like four pea plants, make sure that you do eight seeds. And if you're, when you're planting in these peat pots, you want to do two to three seeds in each peat pot. And make sure that you look on the back of each pack because each pack will let you know how deep each seed goes. Seeds need to be sown at different depths 
okay? And they need to be treated different. All seeds cannot be the same. If you throw all your seeds and don't pay attention to how deep or whatever and just do it random, yeah, you may get some growth, but it's not going to be as good as it could be if you just would do it um, according to the packaging. Yeah, it can be a lot to follow the packaging, but believe me, you'll be happy. And I'm just going to cut this paper towel again. Actually holding it down and just like peeling it past actually works better than trying to cut it. And like you see, I have these. And I'm going to spray some because these are pretty big and dried up. I've heard of people actually buying dried beans at the grocery store and actually um, doing using this method and like growing from lima beans and kidney beans at the grocery store. I should try that, but I don't have any beans. Well, I do have beans, but it's for my other video, and I don't want to open them because it's for my uh, survival and prepper video that I will be bringing to you guys soon. I was supposed to do it a while ago, but there's a lot that goes into making that video, and I had to do a few things last night, which took 8 to 10 hours. We'll talk about that in that video. I'm not going to get into that right now, but as you can see, I have my peas. They look just like the like the regular size peas that you would find like in a cup of noodles or something. I know I'm gonna get this question: Can you plant the peas out of a cup of noodles? I have no idea, but I would say if you're willing to um, try it out, try it out and let me know if it grew or not, because that'd be crazy to know. But I would say it probably wouldn't grow that well because in cup of noodles they tend to use a lot of stuff like um, monosodium glutamate or MSG as is known and that's like really bad for you so when you're buying like chicken this is completely off um subject a little bit but if you're buying like chicken broths and chicken bouillon cubes or chicken uh chicken flavoring powder or sauce make sure that it does not say monosodium glutamate glutamate because that's really bad for you you do not want that spend a few more dollars and get the ones without monosodium glutamate and these are just so dry. I want to really moist, moisten these because they're so big. Because you want to make sure that it has enough that it can germinate. And what you're going to do, I want to see if this, are these all the ones that I plan on doing? And what I'm going to do, let me write the names on them. Should have did that. Do not forget to write your names on it. So this is going to be my sugar snack and I'm going to put the date of um, the date on there and everything, but um, I'll do all the extra stuff to mark, but you want to be very detailed and put your date, put what's in there, um, put like germination time, how long before you should sew it, put all the information you possibly need so you don't have to be looking back and forth on the back of this. Because I like to, like, I'm going to want to put these away because I don't want to risk them getting damaged or my cat getting into them. Because these roll around. Anything that rolls around that could be used as a toy or a marble, he's all for it. So, got these. And these are the Grand Bell Pepper. These are the, what are these? The long cayenne. I'm going to make sure I write hot. Because these, I believe, these are going to be, these are way hotter than the uh, jalapeno. So I have the sugar snack, the long cayenne. I have my grain bell pepper. And you see, I just labeled them, put them all in different bags like this. And I'm probably going to do one more. And what I'm going to do is probably... I'm going to do something that the seeds aren't like so freaking small. A lot of these seeds are very, very tiny. 
But this is like just something I'm trying out. So I don't want to waste too many seeds if it doesn't work out or say if um I don't or if it gets like transplant shot. Okay. And I think that's all that I'm gonna do. Um, I was gonna do another one, but I don't want to waste because some of these don't have as many seeds in them, and I want to make sure that I give myself more than enough um, seeds to to grow. So, on to the peat pellets. I did that one because instead of the peat pellets first, because you can tell they're gonna take longer. So what we have here comes with these little things, but do get more because these are not enough to for all of these because it usually comes with 72. I am doing 54 peat pellets right now. And like I said, you want to do three seeds of each and each one. Look at how deep it needs to be sown on the back of the pack. It will tell you how deep you need to sow this into the dirt and it'll tell you um, how long it'll take before you sprout. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my first row and I'm going to do some tomato plants, some homesteads. It says on the tomato, and what I'm going to use to sow my seeds, guys, is very, very simple. Just use a pencil. I'm using a um, mechanical pencil, no lid, no nothing. Won't hurt your soil, it'll be good. And what I'm going to do is look on the back right here where it says care and maintenance, and it'll tell you everything that you need to know based on your zone, when to plant it, when to, when to harvest it, what temperatures it needs, everything. So this says one-fourth of an inch depth. So what I'm going to do is, since I know that I'm going to do probably one or two rows of these tomatoes, I'm going to do a hole in the middle. It says one-fourth inch, which is like barely. like. But before we get into that, I forgot one important step. Before you sow your seeds in your peat pot, you want to open up the tops a little bit. Like, you don't got to bust it out so the sides fall, but you want to open up the tops a little bit and you want to move that soil. Like I'm doing, you want to move the soil around. And I'm going to, you know, it doesn't take that long. If you're doing this with, um, you can do this like with your kids or something. Or you could do this as a family activity. This is the part that kids can tend to go overboard with and ruin the pod, so I would... Say, let the older kids do this part, or you just do this part on your own. And I'm just going, and I'm opening it. Give it room, because you don't want it to be compact, because remember that the seeds have to push through. So the more compact your soil is, it's going to take, it's going to take a really, um, it will take it longer for the seedling to push through, because it needs to use more energy and more strength to get through the soil. So you don't want to to pack it down real tight unless it's a certain plant that tells you to do that and at the moment I can't really think of a plant that you would really pack down tight okay and what I like to do is I'll take my little pencil and I'm gonna just go through all of these and I'm just gonna loosen up the soil you don't want it um very uh compacted so I'm just gonna go through and I'm just gonna loosen the soil I tend to just go like this like a little swirl and it's good enough because believe me this is good dirt and this actually came with a jiffy seed starting um, packet of like solution that you can dilute in water and what I did was I used it and if it works then I'll make sure that every year I use that solution in the starters of my plants what i wish i would have did was to save some of it because i dumped the rest of it um out because i didn't need that much but i wish i would have saved it because it made like a little pack made like a whole entire gallon of it and i wasn't even thinking i could have used that on the other pots which is crazy but like i told you guys i have my uh what is it my miracle grow which i swear by it works really good you can get the like powder or pellet form or you can get the um um liquid form i don't necessarily like well i've used the powder form so i'm not really sure i can't really tell you guys which one i would think better i only th really think one of them is better than the other but so i got them nice and open i want to just make sure that 
because you know you want your plants to have some space. And another thing to also keep in mind, because I know I'm probably going to get this question, is how do you know when these are ready to go into like a bigger pot or ready to go into their permanent home or when you should um, amp them up and move them to something bigger? You can do this one of two ways. You can do it in like two or three stages or you can do it in two stages. I tend to like to move my plants as little as possible because when you mess with the roots and you move a plant, it can shock the plant, it can stretch the plant out, and the plant can die. So you want to try not to move it as much. So what I would do is I would plant these, wait till they get about three to four inches tall, then I would take this whole thing, drop it into the pot where I'm supposed to, where um drop it into the pot or the home, the bed, wherever it's going to live at forever, and then I would cover it in dirt. And if it's a tomato plant, you want to cover up a nice amount of the stalk because tomato plants, they grow they can grow roots off of the stalk with all the, you'll see all the fuzz and stuff on them. If you look at like a tomato plant that's at like your local hardware store, you'll notice that it's very fuzzy. Those fuzzy strands will go up the stalk, um, will turn into, um, roots and those roots will make your tomato plant very sturdy. You want your tomato plant to have as many stems as possible. So what most people say is when you buy a tomato plant, when you go to plant it in a pot or plant it in your flower bed, make sure that you bury the plant all the way down. Like I would say bury almost the whole entire stalk. You do not want the leaves touching the dirt and you do not want the leaves touching like wet dirt or anything. So don't bury it completely that it's like sitting on the dirt. But bury almost the whole entire stem and you'll have a strong, sturdy plant. I'll be able to get its roots down in there good. And then when you have wind and stuff, because they tomato plants are notorious for um, falling and snapping. So keep that in mind. And these seeds are very small, so I'm going to take my own advice and I'm going to use a plate. Or actually, I'm not going to use a plate. You know what I will. So I was going to say, oh, I got only got all white plates and I won't be able to see it. But I actually have these really cute plates that my grandma got me. Well, gave me. I do not know where they're from. They're beautiful, though. And I've seen some plates like this in the stores that go like 4 to $10 a piece. And she gave me. They're really cute. They're like tea plates. And they have like butterflies and... You know, a little area for your little saucer. I call these like tea plates. That's what they remind me of. Like you'd be drinking tea with some scones or something on here. These are definitely getting used in my garden. These are going to be like my patio plates. Once I get my patio and stuff like that together. Well, not patio. Because I have a yard. And it's like a small little, you know, little patio thing when you walk out there. But it's not big enough to put tables and chairs. So this will probably go when I get my fire pit and stuff like that. Put these out there to serve my guests on. But I'm going to put the seeds on there for now. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to set this right here so you guys can see. It won't hurt the dirt. I'm going to take out my homestead. And remember, you want anywhere from two to three seeds, no more in each. Because you want to give it more than one chance. Because what happens is sometimes if you only do one seed, if it don't come through, then it's just done and you just wasted a peat, peat pellet. So what... What people would recommend you do, Jiffy recommends it as well, is put two to three seeds in each one. And then when they start to grow, you can thin them out, which basically means pluck out the plants that aren't doing the best and leave the best one in there. Or you can pluck them out and try to plant them into um, some dirt and then you might end up with another plant and sometimes you don't. So either one. And I want you guys to see how little these are. It's crazy. Look how little these are. They're very, very tiny. Don't dump them in your hand because then you'll end up with a problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to sow our tomato seeds, two to three tomato seeds. And what really helps you is if you wet your finger or you can use the end of a, a, um, the end of a toothpick or like one of those nail diamond picker uppers. That will really work. But I'm going to use my finger. I just moistened it with a little bit of water. And I'm going to do two seeds. It looks like one, but believe me, it's two. They're so damn tiny. And then I'm going to take my thing and go down, put a hole in the center. And I'm just going to go down about two, um, about a quarter of an inch down. The tomatoes don't need to be buried that far down. And you just want to put those in there. 
And then you just want to cover it up lightly. You just want it to be even. You do not want to push it down there. Just cover up lightly. And then you can go on a little bit faster. I made it like that. And then I'm going to take my finger. And then I'm going to put two more. Take my fingers. No more than two or three. If you if you want to do like sparingly because you don't feel like doing it this way, you can. But you're wasting a lot of seeds that way. So. And you're just going to go around. And if your finger is not moist, it's really hard to pick these up. So moisten your finger. And I'm just putting these in the dirt, covering them up. Two seeds. You guys can see two seeds. And here we go. Cover them up. Two seeds. And I'm going to go get a grow light tomorrow because, like I said, you might want to invest in a light that's about um, two to three thousand lumens. I can't remember if I did this one already, guys, so leave it in the comments if I did. It'll be funny to see, because if I did, then there'll be four of them growing in there. But like I said, you're going to thin them out anyway, but you just want to not waste a lot of uh, seeds. So right here, I did two, four, six. I did six tomato plants right here, um, which are of the larger kind, and I'm going to put the rest. Well, actually, um, yeah, I'm going to put the rest back because I have six homestead tomatoes and then I have two of the patio tomatoes. So I think that that is enough. I don't need that many tomatoes. I might give a few to my sister once they grow, if they do really well. And I don't I can't take care of all of this too many. So make sure you have people that you can give stuff to because certain crops come in a lot and you'll be like, oh, my goodness, I did not expect that. Because you, what you don't want to do is waste your beautiful food that Mother Nature gave you. And you don't want to waste it because you didn't took all this time to grow it. Why waste it? And I did that last year. I had a, I tend to get like a lot of peppers. And what happened was I, my peppers were going, um, they were going like from green. They were changing to green and yellow and red and orange and I didn't have a need for all of them. So what I started doing was just picking them up, trying to put them in the refrigerator. They don't last that long like you would think they would. Um, because you got to remember the ones at the grocery store are treated with all different types of chemicals and stuff. So you want to remember that. What I'm doing is just putting them back into the seed bag because you don't want to waste any. And you don't want them to get mixed up. So make sure that you pick them directly off. And what I'll do just in case, because you don't want to accidentally grow a tomato in like a pepper and the same thing because their seeds look very similar. So what I would do is make sure you wipe this off. Don't rinse it off because you don't want it real wet just in case you got to put it back in there. Make sure you really wipe it off and inspect it so you don't accidentally grow too many. And um, I'm going to end the episode now, guys. It's getting kind of long. And make sure you like, you share, and you subscribe. And check out my website at creativejourney29.com. And I will be back with another episode. And we will continue to sow the rest of these seeds.